dear viewers very warm welcome once again and we continue our journey through our exclusive video series uh, we call it as a fibercraft insights unveiling the strength of jfrp so those who have missed the episode 1 i'll just quickly summarize you we discuss about some of the very basic concepts of jfrp the composition the codal provisions how the temporary permanent applications vary so you can see that video on our social accounts so today's episode episode 2 we call it as unlocking the technical marvel so we have divided it into two parts so today is the first part where we discuss about some of the key technical mechanical properties so we discuss about the tensile strength we discuss about the pull out bonding we discuss about the shear strength so to kick start the process let's welcome once again uh, mr pierre hopman a distinguished expert in the subjects of gfrp a uh, very warm welcome uh, pierre and uh, pierre when we discuss uh, specifically about the structural application mechanical properties obviously the first question comes into mind into tensile strength so how, how do you elaborate what are your views on the tensile strength of the gfrp uh hi everyone again um so you know, yes tensile strength remains the main characteristics uh we are we need, we need to know when designing any kind of uh project whether it's a uh, concrete structure or even geotechnical application um tensile strength of frp or tensile properties uh is a very important topic because it behaves fundamentally different from steel um we are we are all used to uh, steel rebars uh, where we have a yield point, where we have then a lot of uh, plasticity, ductility, uh, which is at the core of the design uh, in uh, structure for ultimate uh, service uh, load. And so GFRB behaves very differently from that. First, GFRB is what we call a brittle material. Uh, that means there's only uh, elastic zone, there's no yield point, there's no plasticity, so only one phase. And um, that elastic phase is uh, characteristic of uh, modulus of elasticity, which for GFRP range between 45 to 60 GPA on average. Um, so first, the, the curve looks fundamentally different because instead of having, again, a yield point and then a completely change of the, of the graphic, here there's, it's a straight line, I repeat on the elastic phase. And then the, the values, we already uh, see that the modulus of elasticity is around four times lower than steel. However, on the tensile, uh, ultimate tensile load, uh, we are able to get much better performance. And so uh, we can reach around 1000 MPA uh, for GFRP. Um, one complication, however, is the properties are not linear across diameters. Uh, so do expect higher performances of small diameter typically 6, 8 mm, compared to the very large diameter up to 50 mm, that would be uh, closer to steel, maybe in the 600 MPA. Okay, so, so here at one side, we are discussing about the properties of the material on its own, but then it's also important to see how that material behaves with the surroundings when it is actually applied. So I'm actually referring to the bonding between GFRP and concrete. So what are, what are your views on that? Yes, of course, uh, as we know, GFRP, uh, again, uh, as a rebar, as, a, as a, an anchor, um, needs to be interacting with the surrounding material. So uh, behavior with grout and uh, concrete is relatively similar. Uh, it's all due to the way we have been designing those GFRP rebars. We've embedded many uh, features on the product to get the best interlocking uh, with the cementitious uh, material. All let's say grout or concrete in general. Um, so uh, GFRB bars have a very rough surface. Uh, we can do that in two manners. On rebars, we get a helical wrap and we get sand on the surface. Um, on uh, anchors or jet technical product, we produce fully threaded bars where we have a much deeper thread. So here it's more mechanical interlocking, but in both cases, uh, we characterize the bone strengths in labs and it's also regularly tested in situ with pull-out tests uh, in, in, in a tunnel project, for example. Um, we get bone strength that is much greater than with steel products. So the minimum requirement um, in the ACI was 9.6. Uh, in the ASTM D7957, 7.6 MPA. But in all the tests we do, we are over way over 10 MPA, I would say 12, 13, 14 MPA is very common results. So we are significantly higher than steel. 
and that allows us to design shorter lapping lengths for rebar or la la shorter bomb lengths for anchor. Absolutely, that is something very significant when you compare with the steel. So, in the very first episode, when we were talk talking about the broad level advantage, we said cutability as one of the advantage of the GFRP. Uh, but somewhere that also triggers a point into designer's mind uh, that this material is weak in shear. So, what are what are your views? D does that put any limitations on the usage of GFRP? So, I would say GFRP as uh, comparatively. Uh, lower uh, static shear than uh, than steel. That's well characterized. Uh, again, in ACI and ASTM, the requirement is 131 MPA, uh, which would be two to three times lower than steel. Um, and that's, for example, a dimensioning factor when we design dowels uh, in uh, concrete roads. Okay, uh, those dowels are here to transfer the axle road, the the, the load from the the wheels moving from one panel to another. So that's dimensioning. However, um, again, when we look at shear in um, a concrete block, and even more, I would say, in anchors uh, that are grotted, um, the surrounding material, uh, the concrete, the grout again, the, has a very uh, important contribution. And so it could take hours. I could do a one hour lecture on shear, but long story short, uh, we, we, it's been published in several papers. Uh, thanks to the surrounding material deforming, the GFRB will not be uh, uh, experiencing a pure shear load, and there will be a lot of tensile contribution. Because the tensile of GFRB is uh, greater, as we just discussed, um, we get tensile properties of GFRB at 90 degree, around 350 MP actual data. And if you get a different angle, it can go closer to the ultimate depth and strength. So we have GFRP that can reach 900 plus MPA when there's a shear angle, let's say of 45 degrees, thanks to the contribution of the surrounding material. So it can be greater than steel. Absolutely. I think that would give a lot of relief to our designer friends that we can definitely, along with the system, as you said, we can use this material even for the shear application. So that's what we have for today, Pierre. Uh, in the next part of this episode, uh, we would discuss more and to, we'll seek your uh, opinions on the longevity, the durability on long-term applications of GFRP. So thank you very much for joining us today. To all our uh, enthusiastic audience, if you have any particular topics, subjects in mind, uh, please do write in the comment box and we'll try to incorporate in the upcoming episodes. Thank you very much, all of you. And until we meet the next episode, please take care of yourselves. Bye-bye. Thank you.